It's my pleasure to welcome you to Answers from Scripture. Whether you're just being introduced to the Bible for the first time or you've been studying it for a lifetime, I'm confident that you'll benefit from Brother Mark's passionate explanations for the Word of God. Hey, welcome back to Answers from Scripture. I'm Brother Mark. And we're just going to look at one verse today, but a verse that I believe has a very practical application, and I hope it's going to help you in your life. That verse is Micah 6 and verse 8, a well-known verse, a popular verse. And the question is this, what's required of believers? Now, in order to get saved, there's nothing required. It's by grace. It's through faith. You just believe and accept it. It's free. But once you're a believer... There's certain things that are required of you, expected of you, that are your duty, if you will. What's the duty? And I want to say this. I love the scriptures in the Bible that help simplify things. Uh, my brain is very analytical, but it likes, it likes to keep it simple. It likes to boil it down and figure it out and try to explain it in a very simple way. For example, there are over 600, probably thousands, but the Jews counted over 600 commandments in the law. It'd be hard for me to remember all those. And so you have where it's shortened down to this, uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and the second's like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two hang all the rest. If you love God with all your heart and you love your neighbor, you're probably not going to need those other commandments. You're, you're going to obey them automatically. And things like that keep the Bible simple for me. Areas where large segments of the Bible are summarized, if you will. And that's what we have in Micah 6, 8. I'm going to read it for you. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. I believe these three requirements of man are associated with the three relationships of man. Usually in Hebrew literature, things start with the greatest impact and work their way down to the less impactful. And in Western literature, we tend to do the opposite. Well, this particular verse in Micah leaves our relationship with God for last. So clearly and atypically, he's doing the opposite. He's starting with the least important relationship, building to the most important relationship. And what's our least important relationship? Yet at the same time important, nonetheless, it's our relationship with ourself. The Bible says, love God. That's the most important. Then it says, love your neighbor. It doesn't say, love yourself. Why? That's already assumed. No man yet hated his own flesh. If it says, love your neighbor as yourself, it's saying we really don't have to remind you to love yourself. That comes pretty automatic for you. You do all right with that. But these are the relationships we have. We have a relationship with God. We have a relationship with others. And we have a relationship with ourself. And in this verse... The order's flipped, if you will, and it starts, how can I have a good relationship with myself? Do justly. If I want to look myself in the mirror and be comfortable with what I see, I need to do my best to live by a clear conscience. I have to do my best to do right, to be fair, to be just with people. Now, not just because other people need fairness and justice, but because that's the only way I'm going to live with myself. I'm going to have trouble sleeping at night if I'm not just with people. So to have a good relationship with myself, it's required that I do justly. But then we go out into the world with this very strict system of justice that we've made for ourselves, and we try to force ourselves to abide by that. And then we try to force everybody else into our mold, people that might not even be saved yet, people that might be saved, but they're maybe not at the same place of Christian spiritual growth. You want to get along with yourself? Do right. You want to get along with yourself? You, you do what you know is just. You want to get along with yourself? You set some standards and some convictions and you live by those. But you want to get along with others? You better love mercy. Uh, you're not the judge of your neighbor. God's the judge of your neighbor. And when it comes to getting along with your neighbor, you need to have an abundance of mercy towards people. Now, treat yourself strictly, but be merciful with your neighbor. Be kind, be patient, be forgiving. If you want to get along with yourself, do right. You want to get along with others, be merciful. 
and show mercy. Sometimes, as believers, we start to grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ without growing in grace. And we get just enough knowledge to be judgmental. And we're trying to force ourselves to live by this new knowledge we have. Then all of a sudden, we're trying to force that on everybody else. And if they don't live up to our new standards, then we're going to condemn them. And we don't want anything to do with them. And all of a sudden, we're isolated. And we're, we become an island unto ourselves. And we say, what happened to all my friends? Well, your attitude happened to all your friends. And they found new friends. No, I want to get along with myself. I got to do right. I want to get along with others. I've got to love mercy. But then what about God? You want to get along with God? He made it so simple. He said, just walk humbly with him. Just walk. You're not going to impress him. All the justliness you can do, and I just made that word up, isn't going to impress God. Your best day is weak in his eyes. Your righteousness is as filthy rags. Don't, don't have any pretense with God. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Don't pretend you're more spiritual than you are. Uh, when you come to God, it's not God, see all this justliness that I'm doing? Just walk humbly with him. Just be with him. Spend time with him. And you know what else? When you, when you spend time with God, you don't need to love mercy because you'll never need to show God mercy. He doesn't need it. Never did anything wrong. He was always faithful to you. He was always good to you. Even when you thought he was being mean to you, he was being good to you. God is always good. God is always just. God is always right. And even if I learn how to get along with myself by doing what's right, and I learn to get along with my neighbor by showing him mercy, it can somehow be intimidating. How do I get along with God? And God says, just spend time with me. That's what I want. Just be humble. Don't be someone you're not. No pretense, don't pretend, just spend time with me. And the more time you spend with him, the more like him you'll become. I hope those thoughts helped. What does God require of us? Do justly. What does God require of us? Love mercy. And what does God require of us? Walk humbly with him. And if you'll do those three things, you'll be uh, an amazing, an amazing believer. People will want to be around you and God will be with you. And that's most important of all. Have a great week. See you again next time. Thanks so much for listening. If you have a question you'd like to have answered, mention it in the comments field below or visit us at www.answersfromscripture.online. 